Coming up on today's show, hear the latest news in the Landman world, along with this week's top five career tips. It's all coming up on Landman Matters. Now here's your host, J.D. Carr. Hello once again, everybody. I'm J.D. Carr, your host for the Landman Matters podcast, episode two, brought to you by LandmanConnection.com. This week, we're focusing on the five steps to interviewing success for the Landman fresh out of training. In the midst of technological advancement nowadays, the back to basic rules still apply when it comes to getting hired for your first contract assignment. It doesn't matter if you're planning to apply with a million dollar company or a small independent firm. When you face an interviewer, it all boils down to how you present yourself. This is a deciding factor whether you'll get hired or not. A lot of research has been made about the interviewing process. Here's a brief run through. First you schedule the interview. Then you're there in the office and you're seen by the hiring manager. The interview itself then transpires. Next is the closing, then you follow up with a thank you note. You eventually get accepted and you discuss, negotiate for, and sign the contract. You may notice that getting the first assignment revolves primarily around the interview, so you might as well polish up your interviewing skills now. That's what today's podcast is all about. So you've distributed your resume to prospective employers and brokers, and you've found an opening that is right for you. The next step is to schedule the job interview. Most people, whenever they're looking for a job, they'll send out resumes and wait for someone to call them. One thing that you should do that can help you stand out is to actually be proactive. You can actually call on companies via phone or email even uh, to request an interview. This is not unheard of and um, it actually shows your initiative and I highly encourage that you, you do that. In any case, whenever you are talking to someone, anyone from the company, whether it be a receptionist or an assistant, It's important to be friendly and polite at all times. Um, These people might actually provide you with information that can be useful to you. Um, At the very least, they can give you background information or the person that you'll be interviewing with. So always be professional and nice to them. Finally, you show up for the interview. The basic traits of being prompt, how you speak and carry yourself, and even how you dress are all factors that contribute to making a lasting impression that will eventually get you hired. Here are the five easy steps on how you can improve your interviewing skills and win your first contract assignment. Number one, prepare for the interview. First, dress appropriately. Once the interviewer walks into the room, or once you walk into a room to be interviewed, your appearance will be the first thing to make the impact. Dress appropriately, check your grooming and mind your posture. Read the chapter in our book, The Landman Professional Career Success Guide. There's lots of useful information from both men and women on how to dress properly and appropriately for an interview. Second, practice basic courtesy. Know where the interview will be held and be there with ample time to prepare yourself before the scheduled interview. Turn your phone off to avoid unnecessary distractions. No matter what, never be late. Research the company as well. Use all your resources to make sure that you know the basics about the company that you're interviewing with. You don't want to be caught unprepared when asked about how you heard or what you know about the company that you're applying with. As a landman, 80% of your job revolves around research, so um, you know being able to answer these basic questions shows that you do know what you're doing. Learn all you can about the potential employer. In your mind, develop a clear picture of the company profile. Make sure that you prepared answers to a few basic questions, but don't sound scripted. This happens when you rehearse beforehand what you'll be saying word for word. It's enough that you have an overview of what you will impart to the interviewer, and it's better to be spontaneous anyway. So just be cool. Step forward so that you're now seated and the interview is about to begin. Make a great first impression by maintaining eye contact, giving the interviewer a firm handshake, a friendly smile, and a polite greeting. Sit only when you're asked to do so, and don't forget to thank the interviewer for taking time off of his or her busy scheduled interview. Make sure to start on a positive note and set the proper expectations from the very beginning. The second step is don't ever sell yourself short. In the course of the interview, answer the questions briefly and accurately. The key is to be honest. Make sure that as a prospective employee, You impart to your future employer that you are what you say you are and what you can do for the company, not the other way around. Stay positive and do not give a bad impression about your previous employer. If you're applying for your first job, don't let your lack of experience hinder you from gaining the advantage against more experienced applicants. What you lack in experience, make up for in confidence and eagerness to learn. You might also put yourself in the employer's shoes. Ask yourself, if I were on the other side of this desk, what qualities should I look for in a potential employee? Would I profit if he works for me and can he contribute to the development of this company? Don't be afraid to sell yourself, but don't be overconfident. 
Just protect an error that you are sure of yourself and your capabilities as a professional landman, and you'll be fine. The third step is to ask questions. Should you encounter a difficult interviewer, don't be intimidated. Anyone who doesn't let you put in a word edgewise should be lightly reminded that you should do most of the talking since he is the one who needs to learn more about you. The fourth step is just to wrap it up. As you near the end of the interview, make sure that all bases are covered. Now is not the time to discuss or even ask about the salary and the benefits that you'll receive once employed. Unless he, bring, he or she brings it up, then it's okay. There's ample time for that once you get the position and you're discussing the job offer or contract. Wrap things up summarizing your strengths and pointing out your positive traits. Finally, as you end the interview, make sure to thank the interviewer again for his or her time, thus leaving a lasting impression. The fifth step, and I'm going to spend some time on this, is the follow-up. It's important not only to follow up in winning your first assignment, but it's a good habit to get into long-term throughout your career, and I'll discuss that here in a few. First of all, send that all-important thank you note after the interview. Thank the interviewer for the time that he or she took with you for giving you the opportunity to meet with him or her. Make sure you know who to contact for follow-up of the results. Um, what a good idea is as you're leaving, um, ask him or her for a business card. That, that way you know exactly what title they have, um, their, how to, the correct spelling of their name, those types of things. Uh, how to follow up on all contacts. If you're still in the job search process, it is extremely important to follow up on all contacts. It's not good to just sit around and wait for results to come pouring in when you think that you've already done your part because your contact information has been distributed. Consider two people applying for the same contract at a company. After the interview, the first applicant just sits around waiting to hear from you know, this prospective employer. On the other hand, the second applicant distributes this contact information to some people that he met in the company. Furthermore, applicant number two does a follow-up on the results of the job interview a few days later. The first applicant has not been heard from because he just relies on the basic, we'll call you routine. Who do you think will have a better chance of getting that contract? Even though the first applicant might be more qualified, since he or she did not follow up or even send a thank you note to the interviewer, in the end, applicant number one is likely not to get the job. If you're still waiting for that job offer and you don't follow up on your contacts, your chances of getting your first assignment become slimmer. In the landman business, following up on all your contacts is a surefire way to spread the word about you, your business sense, and expanding your horizons. If you're still looking for a job, here are some more tips on how to follow up on your contacts. Send a thank you note right after the interview, ideally after a couple of days. Uh, it's also appropriate if you want to send an email, um, that's a good idea as well. This is a way of getting the prospective employer to hear from you again and keep keeping you fresh in his or her mind. Should you not get hired for the current position that they offer, someone from that company will likely keep your information on file for future consideration, so that's not a bad thing. Also, make sure that you leave your mobile phone and landline number, email address, and home address so that the prospective employers will have no excuse of not getting in touch with you. Make sure you're accessible to them if they want to hire you. Uh, be accurate in getting the contact information. In return, when you place their information on any letter that you send out, uh, such as resumes, thank you notes, email, always avoid typographical errors and make sure that you have their names correct. See to it that everything is in order. Some companies do take a look at your character references, so alert the people on your list that they might receive a call from your prospective employers. Um, also, always be on the positive side. Should you not get hired for a particular position, you may ask the people from that company for referrals to other companies, or at least keep in mind, keep you in mind for future hiring. Long term, whether you're just starting out or have a couple of assignments under your belt, get in the habit of staying in touch with all important contacts. For example, you go to an AAPL meeting and you have distributed a lot of business cards. Don't just stop there. These people might actually bring big contracts your way, so it's important to build up a strong business relationship with them. So that's it. Apply these five fundamental interviewing techniques when trying to land your first contract assignment. I can't promise that you'll get every job you apply for, but I can promise you that your chances are way better if you follow these steps. Now, moving on to LMC business. If you're listening to this podcast on iTunes or elsewhere, I strongly recommend that you join our free network at landmanconnection.com. You'll find a ton of resources to make you a more successful landman. We have a professional job war with new job listings updated daily, hundreds of free resources, a complete networking system, and so much more. We even have a pro landman gear shop. We'd love to have you join us if you haven't already. Be sure and join me next week because I'll be discussing five steps to becoming a better negotiator. Negotiating plays a key role in determining whether or not you're going to be a successful landman or not. I'm going to teach you the top five ways of becoming a better negotiator, so don't miss the show. 
Until next time, everyone, happy assignment hunting. You've been listening to Landman Matters, brought to you by LandmanConnection.com, the number one network for the professional landman community. Everything for today's professional landman.